George, Dungeon Master, Ryan, Ayler, Jacob, Alhard, Mac, Joodle Mac, Wyvern Watch, Wyvern Watch, Wyvern Watch, Wyvern Watch, Theme Song. Wait a minute. Five, four, Welcome to Wyvern Watch. That was terrible. Right. Still terrible, though, isn't it? Oh, oh. don't you know it. Gosh. A murder aboard the S- SS self-sustaining, juggle. sky-circumventing stratosphere sphere. Don't you mean the SS Juggle? I don't know what any of you guys talk about, because I'm in the realm of reality. Oh, oh shit! Wow. But if I Not put my time. fingers on my temples, fantasy, oh, and I rub them, rub my temples, and I think real, real hard, at least I find myself... In the realm of fantasy, the, the 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 pleasantries of modern life, like phones and electricity and warm beds, are gone and replaced are yelling peasants and horse shit and people cut in half. Murder Welcome to the Dorn. realm of fantasy. Murder upon Dornell Kelly Batter, self-sustaining sky circumventing stratosphere sphere. <laughs> That's what I liked it. All right. Well, does somebody want to? This was in Dorbin Gallibander found in two. Yeah, that suffice. All right, that was uh, a re- recap. that's a recap of hour thirty-one, hour thirty-two, and go. You know, thirty-two is my favorite number. Mine too. It's weird. It's weird. And that's true. I know. You know. It's been for years. He's not. He's not bullshit. I'm not either. I think they were just cold. Do you have an alibi? Launch into my favorite number is thirty two. It wasn't. What's I wasn't story? doubting you. I was just making sure you know that that George isn't just trying to get close to you. You know, let's have this on the record. Cooper, what's your favorite number? Eighteen. And uh, you didn't say it when we were on eighteen. We were making too many legal jokes. I didn't even think about it. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Mac, what's your favorite number? Ninety two. So we got a while. I knew that. He's not lying. He ain't fibbing. <laughs> he ain't fibbing. But we'll be there. So why thirty two? I don't know. It's always it's, had a ring to me. It's I could also go with I could also go with four, but well, that's too basic. I, my favorite numbers are five and eight. Three, five, eight are my favorite sub ten. Yeah, so my favorite sub ten are probably two, four, and I guess nine. Nine. Nine's a three. It's got a pretty good, pretty good look to it. Yeah. I like three and eight. I got a good one, three, seven going on. Mm, yeah, that's I that's like a good that. that's a good selection. You had well, a two, right? Yeah. So we have one, two, three, and four. Five. Nobody six. 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 Nobody six. six. Nobody six. Seven. Six is an the voice of God. No seven, six, eight, six, six. and then nine. Yeah, we're good. We got everything except six. Yeah. Fuck six. six. Take that, devil. Take that, devil. Yeah. <laughs> Back on track. Um, instead of where there should be one, you guys have two halves of a body. So it's basically uh, leading out onto the the wood. Where there should be so one there's half a, of a body. There are so there's so one, two, body. three, four. So it's four and a half men. Where there should be one body, there are two halves of the body. There you go. That's men, men, men. Uh, men the point men. is, you guys are kind of making jokes and trying to find the bit that lies within somebody chopped in half, and uh, <laughs> Levi is absolutely losing his mind. Four yes. and two halves of a man. Of I, I would like to calm down Levi, at least do my best, try and um, make him take not light of the situation, but just like to coax him, like, right. give him comfort. Sure, I'll say that uh, he appreciates. Oh, Excuse I don't me. need to roll a charisma check for lying to his face. Okay, you're not lying. I imagine you're you're trying to comfort him. Yeah, right. yeah, but he shouldn't be comfortable. He's he should be scared and sad and angry. So That's it true. is a lie. I I'm just lucky that I'm not the one who did it. <laughs> anyway, um, is there anything anyone wants to do in particular before I continue? Um, I'm Get Nat Hazard. <laughs> you gotta go to I the captain's room. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to Jewel and I'm gonna say, "Can you detect magic?" Right now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We yeah. wish should, should, should I detect magic? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna recall. Why are you talking like that? Why, why, are, you, why, why are you talking? Like that? <laughs> okay, the we like silence. Not the first dead person we've seen. Calm down. <laughs> But he was, I murdered a child. But he was. You did what? <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to drag. But he was a well. I'm he was a well liked capitalist. I'm going to drag Judel to the general area that I sensed beforehand. Okay, that's uh, um, you 
actually don't have you hardly have to go anywhere. In fact, uh, it's very close. So you can see it from the stage, basically. Okay. The page. Oh. <laughs> The area that he oh, was, uh, yeah. that he previously I, scouted out. I just, I just kind of point out, it's somewhere around this area. All right, I'll use my knowledge when I try detecting the page from the from the latrine. Okay. And I will cast detect magic. Well, That's everything within your view glows, correct? Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm I'm gonna get Nat Turner also, or not Nat Turner, Levi. Nat Turner's a jazz musician, I think. Nat really? Hazard. A, Nat Hazard. Oh, yeah, yeah get, Nat Turner is like, oh. yeah, I think he plays trumpet or something. I'm going to get Levi, I'm like, come on, look at this. I'm going to do detect magic at the area, and hopefully it'll Can glow. Can we see his detect magic? It, it makes it glow, I think. Um, I feel like you've had to dictate it to others, so just give it a quick check. So if you have to describe it, or uh, if it just is for everyone. Please. So it's just the wizard. Yeah, it's just you, buddy. Okay, well, I'm going to cast it, and I guess I'm going to see where I detect the magic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, you uh, lift the magical veil um, on your eyes, and what you see is that the balloon itself, it seems like um, there is a powerful glow within it, and you're only kind of let into that knowledge by um, sh uh, columns of light, or rather paths of light shooting out from the scenes within uh, or rather where two, say, two pieces of um, uh, parchment or uh, two pieces of leather stitched together, you see, like, light trickling out from there. Uh, and in that area you're viewing, uh, it grows in intensity to a single, say, five-by-five five point where it seems extremely bright, but um, being covered or attempted to shroud by uh, various layers of... Uh, parchment, scrap, scrap, cloth. That's where I think the page would be. Yes. Uh, in addition, is there anything you want to say on that? It's, it's a very page size and, shape. And the and the light shooting through the things, that's like a different source of magic? or No, that's... That's all from the page. Um, yes, because it is being obscured. It's being... Okay, so all the light I'm seeing is coming from the page. In that, yeah. What? I'm trying to just... Well, because you said that, that there's a strong thing like from inside like that made it, it made it sound like there was like magic inside the balloon or something. Oh, that exists too, yes. So so there is a magic... A yeah, yeah there's a faint. faint light that pours out from every single little uh, stitch yeah. or little... Uh, you and know, then there's a concentration like where I think the page is. And then it grows in intensity to like a point or well, rather that make, an That makes area. it sound like that all the light comes from that if it, if it gets more intense as it gets closer to that. As we understand the pages. it now, it's fine. It's I don't. Okay. It's okay. Wait, wait. There's a page. There's a... There, there are two separate magical effects. Well, you would not be able to discern. <laughs> You're right. I can't. <laughs> All you see is that there is light coming out from the entirety of it, and then it grows in intensity at a point. Um, I'll say that as a wizard, you can make a judgment call that... Casting this spell before it does not illuminate an item enough that it would cover its entire sphere, which you know is a monumental piece. Okay. Not monumental, but it's it's fairly large, and one single bright point would not illuminate all of the rest of it to that degree. This thing's although this thing's chock full of magic. In addition, um, you kind of look around. Um, you see, uh, you're standing with Levi, right? Yeah. Uh, Levi's leg does have a faint glow to it. And um, what any magical items you and your friends are carrying. In addition, uh, there is a glow of three, uh, like a slash across um, Dornell's top half that you could not have viewed without that spell. So, so this thing's chock full of magic. And your leg's magic. <laughs> and Dornell's wound is magic. Dornell's really? wound? He was just simply cut in half. Well, Magic. by a gigantic stream of light, but you do 
think that was. Would a magic to be like a magic missile wouldn't leave like a magic sorry, recipe behind with it? Um, temp- I feel like it would temporarily. Uh, okay, but just like for a few Good seconds, as so little arm can I'm not surprised by that. Um, you are. You notice that around the wound where it actually made, where, where that light blade you saw made contact with the skin is glowing, but it starts quickly uh, losing brightness. Um, but that three prong slash across the chest is remaining bright. Um, and the sl- and the slash is also caused by the magic thing. It's like a new slash from the magic weapon when he got slashed up by the magic. Um, you did not see it before, and you don't see any physical wound because of it. So there's like a slash that I couldn't have seen before. That oh, okay, right. correct. Also, there's a slash on his chest. Um, and then viewing his body uh, after it's happened, you see that the wound has been cauterized, basically. It has a magic I wound. I cast it. Cure light. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this guy's a magic wound. I don't know how that works. Wait, what do you mean a magic wound? Then? His yes. wound's magic. I don't know. Yes, we just saw him get cut. In no, 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 no. Uh, the it's, so it's it's a wound above his. Giant yeah, cut. so he was cut, let's say, around the bell area. His torso we, we, has a three prong slash down it. A new. Wait, so it's like cutting through his clothes? Or? No. no. So it's under his clothes. Shining right? through like his clothes. Like I said, Shining through you his can clothes. only no. see it. So I'm going to take. So I'm going to reveal it. The, the scar, I guess, or whatever. Okay. The well, right. you're, so you're lifting up his shirt? Yeah. I'm going to point at it. All right. All three of you can see now that uh, this man has not only been cut in half, but also disrobed. That uh, in, in three channels diagonally across his chest, the, the, the flesh is beginning to, uh, or it is kind of toiling and bubbling, um, kind of almost as if something beneath it is just churning, and uh, this, that, that three column is, or row is darkening uh, to kind of a singe. That's three, and not, not uh, five, like that symbol that we were shown, right? All five of those channels. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no! Oh shit! Oh damn it! That's like the uh, symbol when we saw um, was it tattooed on a guy? Correct. One of the guys in the library, right? Correct. It was Albert or Philander. Why did I say three? Man, I've been wrote it in my fucking book as five. What is wrong with me tonight? Okay, so if one of the guys in the library had this mark on them. Oh. Which one was it? Oh god, I can't. Even Albert or Philander? It was one of them. Probably not the funny hat guy, because because one only there's only one trait per person, really. You can't be the funny hat guy and the scar guy. We'll, we'll just need to fight both of them. Hey, hey, Le- Levi. What's up with this scar I... symbol? What? I. What's up with the scar symbol, and why do other people on the ship have it? And why is it, like, getting third degree burns immediately? I do not know... Why are you asking him? Arr, I know not of no magic. I test Dornell was not no filthy magic user. Can you explain the clockwork mechanism that's making his skin bubble, please? <laughs> I, I know heat does it. When I lost my leg, it cauterized the wound with a with simple fire, but I, I never seen that like this. Also, there's another passenger on this ship that had this mark, like as a ta- was a tattoo on his. I don't. I, he had the mark. It was, yes, mark. It was yesterday for me. <laughs> he had a mark. Um, I mean, for Judel Mac, for Normal Mac, it was a couple weeks. Uh, but uh, another passenger, like Flander Albin, had had this exact mark on him. Where you seem like close friends with this guy. You never, you never saw him shirtless once. Well, I, don't, I don't even think he was shirtless. We, when we talked to him, he had all his clothing on. We still saw it. No, the scar. Um, the, I'm talking about. Oh, you're asking Dornell. about asking. Yeah, I'm asking him about Dornell. You never noticed anything with the scar or anything about this. No. Uh, we never took our shirts off. Okay. We, uh, we didn't know each other like that. Never we, went to the bathhouse. Yeah, just you know. We do not do that. When he dies. <laughs> Level. You know what your friends have on their chests? Yeah, I see. Indeed, Ethelhard has hair. And very nice muscles. <laughs> hey, if you if you guys had a magic scar, would you tell me? Yes. Yeah, you? What about you? Would Most you... likely, yes. Okay, so um, I trust him on that one. <laughs> Levi I... kind of glances down and suddenly his face is washed again with a reemergence of, re-emergence of emotion. But we, we, we don't need to focus on that. <laughs> so we're discussing this magical wound. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I... 
think you should poke it. Why would I do that? I'm not going to touch his dead body. Not with your skin, like finger. Okay. Just like, you know, your little, uh, your, your uh, tiny sword on a long stick weapon, whatever, whatever it's called. A halberd? Halberd, yes. It's not even a sword, it's an axe. It's like a... Oh, we don't need to be talking about curve, this. Big Someone curve, big curve. I, I mean, I can't, can, one can side's I, a lot can bigger can than I, the I, other. Can I go and like look over the railing to see like how the, the ship is doing? Like, is it still flying itself? Oh yes, the ship is continuing its course um, as if on autopilot. Nothing okay. has been okay. done to it. Um, so this dark cloud, did we just pretty much just pass through it and now it's behind us, or did it has it completely dissipated? It's completely gone. Yeah. After those those two uh, beams of light basically cut through it and it fell uh, as if affected by some sort of super gravity, uh, it is gone. Okay. Well, we we have to try and find the person with the five pronged mark that's on the ship. The ones that we saw in the library, correct? Collect. Correct. Good uh, <laughs> uh Yes. We could also... Do you, do you want to check the captain's quarters? We haven't been up there yet. I mean... How, Can we even how get how in easy? there? Oh, like, um, there's a staircase right there. Yes, staircase. But And this is a statement of emergency. We are allowed to use force as, now, as of now. Also, cover's been blown. Um... Yeah, be prepared to fight is what I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, I, I think at this point we do need to, we just need to track down the, the person with the scar. Okay. Um, Alvin. Maybe he's hiding in the captain's court. <laughs> well, nobody went up there. <laughs> in the, you saw? Yes. In the dark? The. Are we going to be rolling charisma checks right now? No. All right, Are fine. you guys trying to convince yourselves? Well, he's trying to convince I me that, we, that we, he didn't see anybody go upstairs. And I just want to go upstairs because I want to see what's up there. I, Maybe there's... I fail. Okay, I so no, I don't buy shit. Also fail. Buy how much? Um, two. I fail. I don't buy shit. Buy two? Okay. okay. There's no way we would have seen everyone go. I just want to see what's up there. Maybe we can, can you give us some information about okay, anything. Okay, let's just... Let's just to be honest... Quick, let's go quick. Let's go quick and get up there. We can Make do sure it quick. It's... He doesn't have anywhere to run. That's fair. Except the route in a circle. <laughs> Well, let's go. Uh, I'm trying to, be, I'm trying to well, walk upstairs. We're, we're running upstairs. All right. So you guys run up those uh, kind of out-of-the-way stairs. Uh, Levi does nothing to stop you. He's still kind of... He, he's starting to uh, get to the next stages of the morning process. Uh, but you guys rapidly run up those sets of stairs. It's narrow. Uh, seems to be made for only one person to traverse at a time. So you do have to go in a linear fashion. Oh. Oh, well, welcome to the stairs. I'm going to get, grab the walkie-talkie, Rocky, but keep going. Okay. Uh, and you eventually arrive to the um, to the captain's quarters that seems uh, that is perched upon the, the very crest of this balloon with stilts around the perimeter so that it kind of stays um, perched on top of it uh, and, and level with the uh, horizon. Uh, and there is a closed and locked door at its apex. Also, what I'm doing, I'm going to take the walk talk rock and I'm just going to quickly ask, uh, Dormo! Oh, Dormo! Uh, you get He's some air can't silence. can't contact him. Yeah. Right. We're out Still, of range, remember? Maybe we got closer <laughs> last day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Here you go. And I don't know what the point of that is. <laughs> We're always out of range. Air silence, yeah. Um, uh, you're presented right. with a large wooden lock door. door. What are, what are you knocking? What if somebody went up there? We don't know where anybody Nobody's is. Nobody's going to be in Try the door. Try the door. All right, I'm going to knock, but really hard, like, to break it down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you hit the door snaps, strong enough, and you off. see the to the right, by the uh, beneath the doorknob, which is a, a brass plate, kind of an, an opening slides downward, and you see there is a small hole there. Like a key hole? Negative. It is approximately a finger size. <laughs> so if anything finger shaped, that's not my fingers. <laughs> uh, I do not know what's in your inventory. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into the hole. I guess. Okay. I'm take a quick peek. Yeah. Uh, you see into the room beyond. Uh, what you see is a an observation deck. There are uh, kind of desk height 
mechanisms that are uh, clad in some sort of dark metal. And you see a, a telescope uh, in one, not really corner again, but one uh, tangent of the room uh, affixed to the balcony. And the rest of the balcony is covered in a glass pane. And so nobody's in there. Um, no, there's also a bed bed on the side, but no, nobody's in there. Oh, looks empty. Hmm. Well, let's just go find... Is there anything in there that's interesting? Like, cranks and stuff? I don't know. Love, mm-hmm. love, 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 cranks, something. switches. Levers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that one wrote that one Ow, oh, my head. Uh, Ayla, that was allowed. You're, you're struck with, a, with a, a very much want to get into that room. It'd be really fun to go pull a lever. Uh, what do you think this hole in the door? We can figure that out after we've caught whoever It'd had that fun. It'd what be <laughs> fun. I want to stick my finger in the hole. A- A- okay. Ayler, A- look down. Uh, uh, Ayler, you place your finger in the hole, and uh, you get pricked by some metal contraption. Ow! <laughs> and uh, the door remains shut. <laughs> do I we lose a... <laughs> no, not quite. Okay. Um, Ayler, what what happened? It pricked me. I guess it must be some sort of look that can detect who's ever is supposed to go in. Like a, a blood lock? Because we might have a good resource of blood. Okay. Let's go grab him. All right, okay. quick, we run back. We just do a quick like, well, like no, no, Levi's no. down there. All right. Uh, Judel and <laughs> Adelhard. Gonna... No, I'm sorry. Judel and Ayler, really? you guys get a great I... idea and run down the staircase. <laughs> Adelhard is following right behind yeah, I'm, you. I'm trying to, I'm running after it. Stop. Uh, stop, 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 stop. At this point, Levi has kind of dragged the upper half of, oh. um, of what's his doornail over to a chair that was resting on stage so that he could prop him up and give him some dignity in his uh, final moment. <laughs> and then we grab his legs. <laughs> you grab his legs? No, I wanted to grab his finger so his finger would go in. I think the prick was like, no, you're not right. But how would he... He wouldn't know it without... It's, it's not magic. He's not using magic, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Levi... Oh, is that a character? Is that a character? <laughs> Levi is uh, making his way over to the bottom. Well, you're doing an impression, so I don't... Levi's making his way over to the bottom half of a uh, door. I'll just call that the Gallivander. He's making his way over to Gallivander um, towards you guys. He picks up the uh, the, the other half like a child in his arms and walks towards the door now. Are there any pieces of cl- bloody pieces of cloth? It, has, it can't be that clean of a cut, right? Uh, it's actually startlingly good. Uh, in addition, it is cauterized. There's blood on the floor, right? There's blood on the floor. Okay, dab it up with a little piece of cloth or something. Okay. It's soaked into the wood. You, you've got a, a bloody cloth. Bloody right. cloth. <laughs> look at Ayler and then look up the stairs. I, I'm just going to stand there with, like, kind of like rubbing my forehead. Okay. What right. do you do? I stuff I stuff the bloody cloth into the door. Hole. <laughs> okay, uh, you just kind of shove bloodied cloth into that door hole, and uh, you hear a whir inside of it, and the cloth actually gets kind of uh, caught in something inside of it, and uh, seems almost as if by protest, but the door on clicks and opens. Hey, oh, that I think that was very morally unambiguous too. Let's go in. All right. The door swings easily open on greased hinges and reveals the, the room I described previously. Uh, you can see that there is a plethora of, of switches and dials on this board uh, that you don't begin to understand. And the, the cot, in the, I can't say the corner again, but on one side is uh, it's unmade and kind of soiled. Baylor, there soiled. is a slight scent, a scent of uh, stale piss in the air. <laughs> he pisses himself. <laughs> Ayler locks eyes with a lever. And uh, starts there sweating. is a large um, red bald uh, lever in the direction that the ship is traveling. And in his head, he hears chanting over and over. Lever. 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 You saw this? Ayler, you get an overwhelming himself. urge to go pull that bright red lever. I start uh, to walk over. You to can it. give it a chance. You can try to fight it if you'd like, with a roll. <laughs> All right. Guys, guys. Ayler starts to walk over. Judel and Adel hard. You. Wait, are. I, I go. I, wait, I, I go. I go to. Oh, wait, okay. Yeah. Wait, I go. Dude, Ayler, Ayler, Ayler. And I point at the piss stain and I say, and I say, oh, look. 
Doranel faulty bladder. <laughs> I mean, no response as my eyes are locked with, with the lever. Did you hear as what I, I said? All he can hear, all I can hear, he pisses is, himself. All I can hear is lever, 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 lever. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that Hauntel has accepted the a, being a, becoming a parody of himself to the point <laughs> of absolute like insanity. <laughs> Like the weird feedback loop of personality when he in the afterlife. <laughs> Are you doing anything I'm, to Ayler? That's so mental. I'm, I'm getting. <laughs> All right, I'm getting close. Ayler has approached the lever and he's rested his palm. Wait up. a second. Wait a second. I'm, I'm just cool noticing what, now what you're helmet. doing, and I realize that this could be an issue, as this many of these levers could probably do very important things that, that with the wrong, <laughs> the wrong pull or push. Could cause catastrophic consequences. Oh, Judah, while you're monologuing, so I recommend <laughs> I pull the lever. <laughs> Ayler, uh, you reach down with some strength, pull this lever towards you, uh, and, and uh, let's let's take a. Per- Did you just look at my strength, <laughs> you asshole? I was just checking. I'm a ten. Let's uh, let's go from Adelhard's perspective. Uh, Adelhard, you uh, beneath yeah. your feet hear some sort of. Uh, powerful roar and the 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 ship begins to vibrate a bit oh jesus christ what was that i'm gonna start running up towards the uh control room <laughs> all right uh Ayler and, and judo you feel that same momentum or rather that that same vibration um as the momentum of the ship begins to slow Ayler hears a roaring cheer in his head. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Like, like a hundred tondles in a crowd. Like all yeah. all like applauding. <laughs> Alright. Some of them mumble, let it, let it, let it, let it. <laughs> I'm snapped out of my days. Okay. <laughs> Realizing yeah. what has just happened. I want to try and put the lever back up. Okay. Um, to what degree? <laughs> all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I pulled it right. down. I gotta push it back. Taylor, you push the lever as far as it'll go on its, uh, what's that, X, X, Y, Z axis, on its Z axis, as far as you can extend your arm. Uh, you get another round of applause from the hostels within your <laughs> yeah! And all three of you um, fall back as a momentum takes the back of the ship and it starts shooting forward. God wouldn't let us die, he wouldn't. <laughs> um, at this point, you uh, hear TPK. a slam on TPK. the side door as Levi's. Hey, what are you doing? Whatever. That's a really good question. I think somebody pulled the lever. <laughs> you don't pull levers. Well, I, I think they pushed it too. <laughs> I pulled it back. Think. Um, I don't want to accept. I don't want to immediately assume agency. All right. Uh, you all three kind of see some of the <coughs> dials on the front of the sh- or on the on the dash of the ship start to, to, to go exponentially quickly to their their right position. Pull it back. Um, and, and some of them have a counter, you see a mechanical counter that is increasing very rapidly. Uh, Taylor, what? put it back! I did put it back! No, you didn't! Yes, I did! Levi's, I, get out of here! You do not belong up here! Yeah. Do you know how to fly the ship? Nobody does! <laughs> <laughs> what about um, what about that he runs, hazard? What he about runs him? over to you, Judel, and starts trying to pull you out of the room. No, he does not. He's a co-captain. I didn't Only touch- the captain can go after the ship. I didn't touch anything. You guys really need to have two captains uh, on the other ship. Are you testing man. his pulling you out of the room? I, I'm not going to cause a scene, but I'm just like I didn't even touch anything. I'm All right, my he's pushing you out of the door into the staircase. Not pushing you out of the door, but pushing towards the door and urging you to go on the staircase with you know physical. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. All right, and he's heading back now for uh, you, Adelhard. Oh, I'm following. I, I, soon. I, 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 yeah. I, as soon as he starts screaming, I'm just like, I'm, I'm gonna get out. Okay, all three of you, right? All three. All right, head out towards the door, and you see um, Levi in a, in a state of absolute panic and uh, worst day of his life. Worst day of his life. <laughs> panic, not knowing what to do. In addition to that grief he just experienced, he's almost, or he's continuing to be in tears. It, uh, you've opened wounds again, and he's crying over the dashboard. The door closes behind you, and you guys are now on the staircase, and there is a vicious wind that is uh, whipping past you as you're uh, heading down the <laughs> stairs. Um, Why did you do it, Ayla? Only the wind really picked up. Judo, only you roll a, a dexterity check. <laughs> what? Oh, because of my grove? Yep. <laughs> oh, fuck. 
<laughs> Miss it by three. All right. Um, well, uh, Judel was first followed by Adelhard. So Adelhard, you see Judel's robes immediately begin to balloon, and he's caught a current <laughs> to go start heading out. You can get a dexterity check uh, to attempt to grab him. I'm going to try and grab him. Dexterity's not all that good. Thinking about if I want to lie and say I memorized the, um, Featherfall this... I, I pass. I pass by three. All right. Uh, you you grasp the uh, the the hood, the cowl of his robes. Um, excuse me. You're not wearing a cowl. You have a hat. That's gone. Um, what? Hat's gone, dude. We're going really fast now. But I push your friend Adelhard grasps the collar of your robes, and I kind of slam you down onto the stairs. That's like right. Getting you, getting you down. I'll give you an extra check if you want to try and grab your hat. Yeah, I like I push him away and go and do a do a flip to grab my hat. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, I get it exactly. Sixteen. All right. So you just but it did fall off of my uh, composition book. I don't know if that matters. It does. Reroll. I won't. Re-roll. I won't be that. Oh. Nice. Ah, because it allows you to as soon as because this all happens within a fraction of a second. You get picked up by the wind and go off, and your hat goes trails slightly further. Adelhard grabs you by your collar, pulls you in, and your arm shoots out like lightning to grab the hem of your hat. <laughs> um, and you guys walk back down to the uh, observation deck. From this point forward, I'll make an effort to hold onto my hat when I know a wind is uh, approaching. That's good. You see the wind coming. I know. <laughs> Uh, where wind will be, because uh, I know that this one floor has wind blowing through it, and other ones have walls. The uh, the observation deck, you see all the uh, the chairs that were on it, and all the um, the, the lounge chairs, the oh, you know Christ. things you fly back on whatever, bye the bye tables, <laughs> and even the stage is starting to fall apart as the wind is shooting things southward. What kind of or speed whatever. are we talking about right now? Very much like hurricane couple, level. Couple knots. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like, where's Dornell? Dornell? <laughs> He's fucking gone. Uh, you, <laughs> you guys you see, see Dornell him. quickly, not gliding rather, but tumbling like a weed uh, uh, across the, the, the uh, observation deck. You see two dots in the horizon <laughs> yeah. in the distance <laughs> fluttering around. This is your chance for action. You've descended the staircase. Oh, we're not going to go try and save him. That's Dor- up to you. Nobody you I, don't, the no, I don't think it'll save him. So no attempts are made to go and... I Fetch think. after this tumbling galley Half bender. A man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, Fault. he's already kind of dead. Yeah. Dornell Faulty Bladder. Tumbling to his... Do you say that in character voice? Well, I, I said it to you, remember? I didn't hear you. Oh, you are going towards the lever. Oh, All I heard was lever. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear you. Hear you. <laughs> I was completely in a trance. I was going to be like... <laughs> There goes, there goes Dornell Faulty Bladder. Remember, remember when I said that to you at the room, Faulty Bladder? Faulty Bladder. He pissed a bed. There's piss stains on his bed. There was remember piss that? stains what? in the bed? Yeah, there's piss stains on the bed. You didn't smell the piss? No. Well, basically, there's piss stains on the bed, and I and I said, I said, Dornell I... Faulty Bladder. Can, can, can we not talk about this? Well, I just want to, like... Only that I remember. I mean, I understand why it wouldn't sound as funny now, but I'm sure you guys can appreciate the objective humor oh. in it. All I remember is walking in the... I'm to make my way across the... the uh, All right. I'm going to bunch up my, my ropes so it doesn't, ropes so it doesn't uh, okay. fly around. I'm going to kind of hobble or hobble run to the uh, stairs as well. I gather you're going with them? Uh, yes, I'm trying to fall behind. I'm yelling at them over this roaring wind. All I remember is walking in the room, and then I saw that the lever was pulled. And that's all I remember. All right. You guys are able to get there easily because you're walking with the wind. Uh, down to the staircase, and you descend back onto uh, the the promenade. That's right. Uh, you see now that at the promenade, the uh, the track for the air elementals above you. Those those creatures are going at an, uh, a very very rapid rapid pace as they're going in that circle above you. Why did you do the sailor? What did I do? I pulled it. I pushed it back. Occasionally, uh, a bolt of lightning kind of travels through the uh, the tube that they are contained in. Didn't you just say that you didn't remember anything before standing in front of the lever? Exactly. I think he's, I think he's connecting the dots. <laughs> uh, there's still plenty of wind coming in here. As the, there's an open window, or rather, that the whole half of the wall is open, so plenty of wind comes into you. All right. Well, we just we just gotta find we gotta find uh, one of those guys. It was 
Can I roll a, like some kind of wisdom or something or Excuse intelligence me. to see if I remember which of the two had the had the tattoo or scar or whatever? Because it's going into my character's memory. Yeah. Because in one hand, and it shouldn't rely on my memory. Sense. Player knowledge, character knowledge. And then in the other hand, it's a lot more fun if you don't. But go ahead. Yeah, we're all wisdom check. I got it. All right. You remember? Um, you, you have a flashback. This is the flashback episode uh, of Philander's sleeve riding up and catching a, kind of a small five channel of scar on his arm. Wait, it, it was Philander because I remember because he one had a funny hat, one had a funny scar. It was him. It's Philander. We need to find Philander. Okay, well, where would he be? Perhaps he ran back to the library? That's not where I would hide. <laughs> I would be grabbing my shit. We need to find his room. That's fair. Let's go down to the state rooms then. Yeah. All right. I continue downwards. Okay. I follow suit. You guys all continue downwards. You walk by the casino and you hear uh, the, the the yell of Vincent still inside. <laughs> uh, to grab where the fuck's my money? <laughs> <laughs> and as you, uh, in addition, going throughout these hallways are the same as uh, Sekiro bots now uh, sirening and just kind of skidding around. <laughs> And even some starting to show their ability to climb up vertical surfaces, but uh, all like chickens with their heads cut off. Uh, and you rush down the nearest staircase to get to the stateroom level. Is there a siren going off? Uh, just the individual sirens of the Sekiro box. Okay. Uh, and once you get down to the level, you hear a, a muffled explosion from beneath you. Aylor, what the fuck did you do? I didn't do anything! <laughs> uh, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you, you idiot? How do I get to these keys? <laughs> How do I leech these keys? What leech? I thought I thought that's what it was. How do I leech these keys? No, how do I reach these? How keys? do I reach these keys? It's a self record. I know it's a self record. Yeah, so how, I I how do I teach? How do I get? To, uh, how do I reach these keys? Yeah. You're right. You're right. Oh, it was a, it was a teacher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Carpenter was being the teacher. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! An explosion. Um, so it came from below. So what where all the fuck? rooms are? It came from the rooms? <laughs> no, you guys have gotten down to the room level, and uh, you you kind of feel it from beneath you as it shakes the ship. I hope that didn't kill Nat Hazard. <laughs> Let's kick down doors. Um, and, and all right. So what are you doing? Kicking down doors. Uh. Going around, knocking on doors. So I guess the closest one would be five or four, right? All right. Let's see where my map went. Well, we know exactly what's in five. Ours. Um, Our shit. Or the beaches. Alright, so the five right. or... or at least one of them. Okay, so. You're showing me on the map? Um, we're gonna. Oh. Nice. Alright. We're going to. I'm gonna go at least to W4, I guess, right there. Alright. Right there. Um, are you knocking? Or are you kicking? What are you doing? Okay, I'm gonna knock first. Because I'm a nice guy. I'm a good enough guy. I'm a swell guy. Okay. Um, the door opens. It opens very suddenly. You almost don't knock. Uh, you, you knock once, basically, and the door swings open. <laughs> uh, standing there is uh, Albin. Albin. How did Albin's voice go? I... Funny half voice. I don't know. Oh! oh. What? What is happening? Bilderberg, what is this? Where? Uh, where where's Philander? Philander? I don't know. I... Which room is his? Uh, room six. I don't know. What is All happening? Right, what is happening? No! What is? <laughs> I go to room you six. You uh, he. Le- All right, you guys go to room six. He's uh, following after us, yelling. Yeah, basically. What is going on? Um, room six. Uh, you knock on the door. You get no response. Uh, can I? I knock with my feet very hard to open it. Yeah. I'm, well, no, I, I'm gonna try and kick it down. Roll a knock. Roll a strength check. Who is are testing? Um, we're both doing it at the same time. It seems. So. Uh, I get I, it. I do not get it. All right, by one. You guys never been in this room, right? Yeah. You've no. only been in four? Five. Uh, whatever. The All right, so you kick down this door, uh, and it's and it breaks easily. You can tell that the um, door now kind of went cheap on these locks, uh, but it opens, and you see a, a room that has been kind of reorganized to create a large central space. Uh, inside of the, the center of it, you see some sort of, of pouch that has been opened, uh, and laid flat, and has a, a pile of, of yellow dust sitting. I in pick the something up on the nightstand and throw it in the middle. 
Fuck you, light, light, br- silence. Well, okay, well, we can go with the remainder of the description. Okay, I'll, 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 actually, yeah, I'll listen to Mary Susan, because that's what Judah would see. Okay, yes. Judah sees uh, the, this, pa- this, uh, this pile of that powder, uh, and then kind of around it, the wood has been uh, singed and warped. Uh, in addition... Uh, the, the window behind it has some uh, has some cracks kind of formed on it in a spiderweb pattern, and there is a, a faint haze in the room all around it. Small little cricklings of electricity uh, travel throughout it. Was it in the direction of where I heard an explosion? Uh, no. The explosion? Negative. No, okay, so it's just, the room, just no. magic shit happening there. That was the yeah. engine blowing up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, so wait, so the, the circle with like dust in the middle, or uh, it's a it's an open leather pouch, and in the center there's a, a pile of dust, and uh, then around it is it's kind of a warped and singed, darker colored wood, like like when the Terminator tribe travels. Yes. Okay. Uh, occasionally, those little tricklings of electricity that are in the clouds hit the singing of the uh, hit the singing uh, around the bag, and it, it travels in a path that you can see kind of forms some archaic runes, as the wizard would recognize. Is I'm, inner insight. I might like, the wizardly guess that the the guys that are killing who killed uh, Dornell teleported in from this room due to magic shit. Oh wait, but I say I don't say magic shit. I say um, the actual magic term instead of the uh, instead of the gobble like the, the when you make up like when Star Trek makes up terms. Oh yeah, <laughs> say that for magic. Okay, <laughs> so insert that in your mind um, to teleport onto this ship and. Uh, I don't know, probably get the page. I think that's what they're after, right? I would assume. That's what Dwarma told us, right? Anyway. Mm-hmm. But they don't have it because you saw it. Yes. So we still have time. All right, you dun, guys dun, are dun, dun, uh, dun, dun. kind of messing around in that room, kind of drawing conclusions uh, when from beneath you, the gaps in the floorboards, black smoke begins to filter through it and oh, mingle God. with the, the, the powder in the air. This thing is <laughs> fucking going down. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick, pick up like a, a lamp on the... Like an unlit lamp okay. on the on the table or something like, it would be like I'm gonna throw this at that shit. I'm gonna disrupt this. Do I I'm, with my magic knowledge? Do I know if, if that will make it blow up? Because if it makes it blow up, I won't do it. You roll would not <laughs> have experience. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In in, well, I, in any teleportation magics, in most powder magic, I read up. And read powder up. magic is not a type of magic. Is. That is a. That is a well, spell component. Not, welcome not to my... That's welcome, Minecraft magic. Not it's not redstone. Type, not a type of magic that you know of. Oh, oh, shit. Welcome to my universe. <laughs> can I roll, like, an intelligence check? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You can roll a throw in the lamp. 12, check. I get it. All right, you suspect this would not cause a large scale explosion. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, Fuck you. you Light roll, silence. Uh, you gotta roll a... What it are it? a small scale explosion. Yeah, dex dex or, for accuracy. Yeah, dex for accuracy. Strength for power. Well, well it's well. power. And I don't get dexterity, so I could have, I could have very well just hit the glass. <laughs> yeah, roll, I missed by three. Roll a d twenty. See if you hit the glass. Could this be the roll to hit? If you roll Actually, a one, you hit the glass. Twenty. All right. So Does that recorrect the path to where I want? <laughs> what happens it actually is you throw it and uh, severely misjudge the weight of this lamp that you're throwing, and you throw it just way over into the cloud, but a, a small piece of electric, or a, a small current of electricity hits it, connects, and its conductivity shoots it to the ground, uh, directly into the middle of this cloud pile. Or this like a trick shot video. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and the entire pile just kind of goes up into smoke, or rather into powder, and mingles with it in the air, and now there's just a thicker cloud of yellow in the middle of the room. I could have very well saved our lives. I'm, I'm going to leave the room. Smart. As am I. Okay. I very well could have saved our lives, fellas. Quickly. Uh, roll a constitution check, Noodle. Got to back out balls of the room. All right. <laughs> and I do not get my constitution. All right, so you do breathe in some of that material. Uh, you kind of feel like when you breathe in... Yeah, let's say when you walk into like an ashy smoke and you kind of feel your mouth get coated with a layer of just almost like sand particulates. I'm going to start spitting as I back out of the room. Like right. spitting. Like... <laughs> Your spit is a uh, is a is a deep yellow, like you a just, dandelion, you kind of a powdered color shit. You've done this before in other campaigns, have I? Or was it you, the black powder that like permanently no, stained? That happened to me. That ha- oh, so this is Scott like did that cycle of abuse. This is a cycle of abuse going <laughs> a little bit, but uh, no, it's not. It's not going to stain. It's not that harmless. Okay. It's got a yellow mouth. Harmful. harmful. No, harmless. Oh. Harmful. It's yes. not that harmless. Mm-hmm. Fuck! <laughs> well, I'm backing out. It's all right, up. you got a mouthful of that. But uh, all three of you are, are uh, sh- shutting the door. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, 
Who's up? Ailer, Adelhard, you're the first one that said you're leaving, so roll a uh, perception check. I will do that. I will do that indeed. Ooh, I feel like two. All right, you know Guy, nothing out of the ordinary when you return to the hallway. Guys, I just thought of something. I passed by. We're trying to find guys who are who are clearly into terrorist-like... <laughs> Terrorism has always existed, George. It's just a thing that people have, uh, have lived with. No, no uh, inspiration by, by Bush-era... Politics. Moving on. Anyway, <laughs> terrorist activities and those ca- those types of ex- those types of extremist groups, the relationship Bush era, um, would would be the kind to cause an explosion. I think that explosion might be related to who we're looking for. The black smoke has begun to become thicker. I Let's go downstairs. And I pull I, my cl- the cloth the cloth thing over my mouth. I it's not breathing shit. The explosion shit is related to Aylor. I think we need to go look for the page. I agree. We must go search for the page. I think and get off this as fast as possible. I think, as as a priest, you should be more concerned with saving lives than saving your own saving your own quest. I think we should go down to the engine room and assess what's going on, so we can properly uh, decide how to the best way for everybody. I just okay. Let's let's go down. Check it out. All right. Alright, so you guys go down, and uh, you run down the stairs, uh, and you go back into that familiar area where you were denied entry before, and through a thick smoke, you see that, that, that door that once stood so so strongly in your way has been uh, chopped down, pushed into the room beyond, and smoke is pushing out uh, from, the, uh, from the top of the doorway and filtering up through those slats of wood. I would like to cast Dust Devil. Alright. Do the, do the chops seem to have been um, enacted from a gnomish level, or whatever the guy was? Um, oh, and there was a human. Human? Really? Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Alright, you were casting you Dust really, Devil? You really don't yes. like new... Uh, I kind of assumed to, everybody was a gnome. To you know? what end? <laughs> to, like, clear away of the smoke. Does, and it, does it do that? It should. I'm sure it does, I don't doubt you. I mean, it would make sense. I've casted it once. It's a little sparrow. Oh, yeah. It's my stand. Stand. Stunded. Wasn't there a bird with a stand in the show? There was a dog. Yeah, oh, there's a dog in the stand. No, there was yeah. Iggy. Yes, there was a hawk. That's yeah, right. Hawk. Yeah. I never watched a single episode. <laughs> and thank God for that. I thank you, the Lord, for saving me from anime. Very water. Very far. Dust Devil. All right. Spell enables a priest to conjure up a weak air elemental. Dust Devil AC four two hit die. Movement eight one hundred eighty feet per round. One attack for one d four points of damage, which can be hit by normal weapons. Whatever. Dust Devil appears as a small whirlwind one foot in diameter at its base, five feet tall, four to three feet across at the top. It moves as directed by the priest, but dissipates if it is ever separated from the caster by more than thirty yards. Its winds are sufficient to put out torches, small campfires, exposed lanterns, and other small open flames. Dust Devil can hold a gas cloud or a creature in gaseous form at bay or push it away from the caster, though it cannot damage or disperse such a fuck. I don't cast. Oh, I cannot disperse such a cloud. I can't. I mean, it can so, hold, it can yeah, it would like create cloud. a pocket of fresh air. Yes. It, yeah. So, okay. It, it just can't get rid okay. of smoke. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it wouldn't absorb it. Like yeah, a, I'm casting Dust Devil. That's yeah. smart. That's good player, or that's good, Ooh. good char- good class usage. Good there you nog- go. Good oh. usage. I'd like to uh, flash my horse rat, <laughs> dragon <laughs> monkey. All right, uh, you guys see Ailer do some magic hand stuff, and a tiny little bird appears, uh, f- flapping uh, a foot or two off the ground. Whoa, uh, you guys, uh, a small hemisphere of pure air is created all around you three, provided you stay within the Very atmosphere. close. Yes. Yeah. And I shall. All right. Yes. Are you... I would like to also ready my faux shirt. Okay. Faux shirt at the ready. Have a baba. Have a baba. Ready, um, ready to hit things with my staff and also maybe shoot a magic thing. Like, all right. right. So all three of you. Like you're standing like this. Enter into yeah. this smoking room uh, and you see that this room uh, could once have been used for or it was once uh, used uh, 
primarily for storage as the perimeter of this again circular room has uh, various luggage compart or luggage containers stacked up against it in addition to crates to hold foods, wines, uh, veals. Uh, however, at the moment, the real, real focus is uh, at the center where a large machine uh, is smoking, it is, uh, it is charred and smoking in, in a heap of scrap metal uh, as it, it's embers and burns. Uh, it connects by a channel up to the ceiling where you can now see that the underside of this, uh, this sphere is a, a dome of some translucent material allowing you to see up and into. Uh, and you can see the interior of the sphere, much like you did your porthole, but this is, it, it offers you a much more vivid view and you can ex see exactly what's going on. You see um, the entire area is kind of, it is filled with, again, that yellow kind of cloud of smoke. Uh, and you can see up in a corner, a rectangle illuminated that seems to cast a light into this place, like a beacon uh, in a sky or a star in the night. Uh, in addition, you see two uh, humanoid figures floating towards it with a tether towards the um, bottom where the machine is. Surrounding the machine, you see one humanoid uh, who has stopped and turned to look at you. Again, this will be, uh, you, don't, you can't quite make out features because aside from your hemisphere, all you're seeing is shadow forms, really, yeah. illuminated by that single rectangular light mm -hmm. in the dome above. Um, and against a wall, you can see another form that is crumpled uh, and soot around the uh, where the luggage compartment is. Does the shadowy figure take notice of our presence? Yes, it has turned, yes. and um, with the kind of smoke changing current, it is looking at you at you three. Alt in the name of the Bilderberg family. Shut up! Are you the light silence? Uh, you can kind of see we that, never tell. <laughs> uh, as, are, you, are you guys closing distance? Yes. Yeah. All right. So that allows you to see a little bit more that it is a, a figure hooded in robes with a, uh, something like cowling its face and it lifts this robe and you see it's got a, a, a glorious mask. Yes. Face. Awesome. Face yeah. is just the He's five, beautiful. five prong <laughs> scar. A glorious like, uh, plate, plate helm. Uh, that is glowing uh, and piercing through the darkness. That kind of star in front of it is glowing like a flashlight in the dark, uh, and it directs towards you. So does that um does uh, that bring a negative to his uh, armor class or a, a negative? All adjustment. three of you roll a savings throw versus paralyzation. Oh, I'll tell you if you succeed. Uh, Ten. Wait, what is my saving throw modifier? Um, just tell me what you. Oh, oh fuck the saving. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I roll a ten. I roll an eleven. So I got a ten. ten, 10 All right. 11. So yeah, for so either roll for you roll, fuck. for wizard, a ten is a success. Um, you resist paralyzation. For you, priest, a ten is a success. And for you, cleric, he's, he's also druid. Priest. He's also druid. priest. He's druid. A druid. druid. So both of you guys succeed then. Uh, resist this uh, paralyzation magic. So do we you feel do... something. Trying... Yeah, you feel kind of like <clears throat> a current of electricity run through you, and your muscles tense up for a moment, but you're able to fight it off. <laughs> and you don't have to do that. Force your arms to move. We don't do that every time we glance at it, right? Um, right we believe. <laughs> You'll uh, have to do it periodically. I'll let okay, you know okay. when. And... Right. But yeah. Uh, in addition, uh, f from his from his shawl. He draws a long, illuminated blade with a curve uh, and rushes towards you. This is not justice. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> it's a justice. <laughs> Roll initiative. Yeah. Next episode. All right. Hour. Goodbye, everybody. So that's my one-liner as I ready my help. This ain't